evening, everyone. I'd like to call to order this public meeting of Jenkintown Borough Council for June 26, 2017. Mayor Foley, would you lead us in the pledge? I'd love to. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. officer in the Jenkintown Police Department. So I move. So here a second. So sure. I can, can, any questions or comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Motion. I make a motion to appoint Paul D'Onofrio as a part-time police officer with the Jenkintown Police Department. Do I hear a second? A second. second. Any questions or comments? All those in favor, say aye. Aye. I apologize if I butchered your name. You said it exactly right. Good, sir. You are probably the worst person to say this. And now we'll ask the chief if you will swear in the two officers. Well, yeah, I want to ask the mayor to do it. But first, I'd like to thank uh, Madam President and members of the board and Mayor Foley for this appointment. Uh, we've interviewed. Um, 18 candidates for the part-time position, and we narrowed it down to two candidates here tonight. And they've completed all police department uh, requirements, mm -hmm. and uh, I would ask the mayor if he would be kind enough to swear them in. Okay. Please do. Mayor Foley. Mr. Ware, would you be able to get a photograph? 
Uh, are there any questions or comments? I have a question. Yeah. You said four plus, so I just wanted to know what the what that plus meant. Um, we're at four right now. You're at four right yeah. now. And what's your anticipated? Do you have an anticipated projection about where things will go? Um, I guess it depends on the office space and from the area. We still have it with one area that could be designated an apartment, but it, it's really been tough marketing office space, unfortunately, in Jakingtown. Yeah. Um, residential, if people are banging down doors to be here, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. So um, we'll, we'll see. I mean, I'll probably have to come back again if we go one more show. That's good. Mm -hmm. That's good. Thank you. You're welcome. So uh, just to follow up on that, would the plus be on the second level? There's, there's like a half level in that building called a mezzanine level. Okay. So it would be on the mezzanine level. It's an interesting retrofit that they did back in the 80s, I guess. Yeah. Oh, sure. um, I'll just comment. Um, thanks for coming, Jeff. Um, the Planning Commission did review these plans at our um, museum our meeting and approved them. Um, so they had no issues, no concerns, as did the committee. Mm -hmm. I think that's great. That's great. All right, so. See if there's any public comment and close the public. Thank please. you very much. Are there, is there any public comment or questions for um, this applicant or for council? All right, then we will close the hearing for um, 201 York Road. Do I have to vote on that, or we just can vote it? Uh, you, can, you can vote on that, so All make right. a motion to close the public hearing. A motion to close the public hearing for 201 York Road. Okay, so second. second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Oh, any opposed? All right, very good. So um, I, you are welcome to stay. Uh, I think later in the meeting, we will um, move this forward by voting it, vote, voting on the conditional use. Can we just do that now? You can do that now. We can order. do it now. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. I'll make our order of business to be shorter. All right. I move to um, approve <laughs> the conditional use application for 201 York Road that has just been presented to us. Should second. I be there a second? Questions or comments? Seems All those great. in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Great, let the record show Thank you. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. We're very um, excited about the floor plan. They look like great spots. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, I believe that we need to have a second public <coughs> hearing. I move to open a public hearing to consider ordinance number 207-4 regarding vehicle <coughs> storage and surface parking. And um, do I hear a second? Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Thank you very much, Madam President. Uh, we were asked uh, to look at our definitions in our zoning ordinance related to uh, surface parking and car storage, knowing that the plethora of, of these kind of uses are becoming more and more prevalent in the borough. Uh, so we got together with staff, uh, with Mr. Locke, uh, various planners, and worked together on uh, new definitions, uh, uh, tightening that process up. Um, I'll have marked as T1, a copy of the ordinance, uh, T2, a uh, copy of the advertisement of this public hearing and T3, a recommend, uh, T3, the recommendation of our planning agencies. And just like the last one, if you wanted Mr. Locke or Ms. Farrow want to make a brief explanation of what this was, and then there would be public comment and close the hearing, not comment or not, whatever you want. To do. All right. Thank you very much. <coughs> um, so are there comments or questions with regard to this ordinance? I actually have a comment or a question. It's a minor zoning, it, it's okay. <laughs> it's a minor zoning change. Okay. So, um, my question has to do with what I have a hard time understanding the language in section B, 181-57B. And um, there are eight points under that. And we want um, any properties that are designated as storage or parking to have um, appropriate plantings and barriers 
And so number six says, no fencing, barriers, or obstructions of any kind are used to contain or screen vehicles, which leads me to believe that, like if I were to read that, I would think, oh, it has to just be an open lot. But we want people to adhere to the, the um, part of the zoning code that requires buffers and plantings and barriers. Okay, um, it's we've been advertised, you can table it, and we can readdress that. That's fine, that's what you want to do now in present. Or can someone explain to me how this, you know, it just doesn't seem like ambiguous. Well, I think we just want to stress that we would like some green buffer around, um, about, around any storage. It might not be specific then. It might be to say that, because this could, I think you could interpret this as saying that that is not even allowed. Or if we, if we referenced the other part of the zoning code that... Well, the other part of the zoning code exists. These, the zoning code doesn't act... Uh, this is just merely an amendment. This is not operating a lock, vacuum. The rest of the zoning code... Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, but George, can you help me understand that part of this? Yes. Um, I don't actually know why that is in this ordinance, but I know that our land development, if they came in to do this, that they would have to follow the land development and the subdivision salvo, mm -hmm. which requires a screen. But is this in contradiction to that? And so like no, there are two separate bodies of law. No, they're not. Okay. You, as George said, you would still have to follow the subdivision land development. And that takes precedence over this? Is that what you're saying? Like if they work in tandem, okay. but just because it isn't specifically said in this doesn't mean they have to don't have to comply and sell that. What if the property is already an existing parking lot? Yes, uh, if, if it is existing, let's say not conforming. That's not conforming. It's grandfather. The okay. second they propose improvements, then they have to comply with the law. Then they have to comply. Yes. We, we can't change anything that's currently the cat's out of the bag. We can't yep. change that. Okay. The trigger to that is improvements. If something they come in for improvements, then they have to. Okay. Yes. You struck my research. Would that be a minor language change on the elbow, or would we have to go? No, I think we would have just have to re advertise. So, you know, you know what? We can go ahead and continue this hearing to next month and clear that up. I mean, it really doesn't. It's not going to hurt the process. I mean, we just have to re advertise. Right. I just I, I just want to make sure that it says what we want because okay. we want there to be screenings. So, so Madam President, then what I suggest you do is you make a, a motion to continue the public hearing okay. to next month, and then we will get back to address that um, and you know, clean that up. That's okay, good. I should check with my colleagues. <laughs> does that make sense or? It does make sense. I, I hate to pay for the additional I hate to pay for the recording costs and um, and uh, advertising costs. Um, but if you feel that it's unclear, um, we should make sure the ordinance is what we want. I think if we're going to do this, it should be clear. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And if we're going to say yes to fencing or that yes to fencing or screening, we need to also be clear of what we're well, not You don't want to screen what's on that now because yeah. of what we can put up. Chain link fence. So mm -hmm. Or just something exactly. really. Okay, so I move to continue this hearing to um, next month. What's next month's council date, George? Just so it's on the record, we don't have to re-advertise the hearing. Yeah. It is, I have it right here, it is July 24th. Okay. So, so July 24th, 7 p.m. at Jacob uh, Town Borough Hall. 7, okay. 7.30 p.m. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, do I hear a second? Second. <coughs> Any questions or comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Thank you very much. Sorry for that wrinkle. Okay. And I move that we go back into our normal um, public meeting. So we'll hear a second. 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 All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. All right. Our public hearing is closed. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, next on the
agenda is public comment. Um, is there anyone here who would like to ask a question or make a comment? Yes. Could you state your name and address? Peggy Dow, 301 Renamy. I just wanted to make a, a public statement um, for the record regarding the zoning ordinance, the ongoing zoning ordinance at 303 Renamy Avenue. Jenkintown appeared in front of Judge McHugh on June 7th, and the judge ruled and agreed in the borough's favor and found the, the tenant guilty of running a business in violation of the uh, zoning code for the residential area of no impact. <coughs> so, again, just wanted to make the public statement. I think, uh, I think it's pertinent because it's been kind of an uphill battle. So, uh, well, thank you very much for, for making that statement. Thank you to our staff uh, and solicitor for attending and pushing us forward. Yeah, thank you. Is there anyone else? Yes, would you stand and state your name and address? Hi, Mary Jane Riley, R E I L L Y, 410 West Avenue. I was, I'm here to inquire as to whether the borough requires property owners to perform maintenance on their properties when it negatively affects um, bordering properties when this maintenance is not performed. Oh God, I sounded like Bridget. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It was a lot of negatives, so it's hard yeah. trying to... That's why I sounded like Bridget. <laughs> okay, yes, George, what's trash. going on with the trash and the pebbles that have been spewing onto my sidewalk and top garden for three years? Trash, I don't know about the well, pebbles. trash I call when you have, you know, four cups of black pebbles on your sidewalk every day, um, it becomes trash. You've walked through them, haven't you, Deborah? Um, or are you driving? I don't know. I'm definitely <laughs> walking there. I'm just trying to, um, I haven't noticed huge piles of black pebbles, but I've They're noticed spread it. all over. The is Yeah. The paving is deteriorated after you go over the sidewalk and into the driveway. There's two areas where the tires go. There's deterioration of the black gravel on the property. And which property is this that we're talking about? 412. Okay, is that the one with the turret kind of? No. The, uh, next, the one right next oh, to my right house. Oh, right next to your house. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We notified the property owner that he needs to fix that asphalt. Mm -hmm. I know that they were How recently, recently notified when you when you contacted the borough, I guess, a couple of weeks ago. Okay. Because <coughs> I've also contacted the borough a year ago and two years ago. So how many years does he get to fix it? Is my question, I guess. I could give you the time frame on the letter, but I don't have it in front of me. I could give you that. Okay. No, I mean, I'm, I'm just saying, did, was he told to fix it two years ago? I would have to look at the records on that. I know that everybody along there, he's, he's done several things that you have asked the sidewalk. Where I didn't ask there. about the sidewalk. You asked about the sidewalk. I asked about the sidewalk. Yeah. I'm, I'm ha happy to admit it. We For want sidewalk. our sidewalks to be in good repair. And speaking of sidewalks, I have um, another question, and I'm wondering if um, the commercial district has been exed. <laughs> well, I was going to um, ask the manager to address that question, and uh, I, and by way of addressing that question, I will state that um, sidewalks and property maintenance have been all of our concern. We talk about it in our um, BZ and our building zoning and revitalization meetings. We also talk about it in public works and public safety. Um, so we have kind of a uh, I'm going to say a multi-year plan of uh, George and the zoning staff to go out and inspect the sidewalks to mark them and we have a paving schedule and some of the sidewalks are tied in, improvement to those sidewalks are tied in with this paving schedule. Um, and we have been working to improve in the business district the uh, maintenance and, the, um, and getting businesses to improve their sidewalks as well. 
We've also been, as you know, we got a very big grant to do um, streetscaping from, remind me of the boundaries of so Southern sure. to Cherry. And we have put in an application so that we can continue that streetscaping I'm going to say from Summit to Harper or to Washington? Or at least to Washington. Yeah, to Washington. And so um, we are waiting for some of those grant dollars to come in. Um, we also have significant improvements planned for Washington to, how far does that go up? The latest one was Abington? No, the one that includes the gateway improvement. That's between your <coughs> No, the the gateway treatment on the corner of Washington and York will inc include some sidewalk improvements. Yeah, but I don't know how far up that goes. Well, the Harper. The, the, the sidewalks were marked up at the Greenwood from oh, okay. York. Okay. Okay. Good. So well. It, speaking of streetscaping, is there any provision to maintain it? If you've walked on the 300 block of York Road, east side, um, it's in desperate need of um, repair. Well, resurfacing, releveling, I guess. And there are many places where there are pico boxes that, I don't know whether they, they sank or the sun were raised, I'm, I'm not quite sure, but they are certainly much more challenging than that little tiny nick that was out of the corner of my one block. Um, well, let me just say thank you for bringing that to our attention and we'll, we'll send our um, inspectors out to take they a look should, at You it. should maintain that. I mean, one snow and it's all ready. Yep. Okay, and we're going to see about those holes. Yes, if you follow up with me tomorrow, well, actually, I'm off tomorrow, but if you follow up with me or email me. Yeah, I'm surprised that's probably when I would follow up. Um, does he have to tell you, excuse me, does he have to tell you when he does it? Yeah, he'll have to get a permit from you. Okay. The um, could I, ask, could I ask for a favor? The last time that an absentee landlord many years ago had that lot resurfaced, it burned my property four feet in. Um, I lost a whole summer of garden um, because of the hot, the heat, I, I don't know. But um, if, if he's going to do a big hot job, could you let me know or he let me know or somebody let me know? Yes, if they pull a permit to do the whole thing, I will let you know. Thank you. I don't think they're going to, but <laughs> thank you. All right, thank you, Mary Jane, for bringing all this to our attention. Is there anyone else who would like to make a comment? <coughs> All right. Thank you very much. Now we have two pre well, I don't see Steve So we'll have one presentation from Marley Weiss and the um, Montgomery County uh, Planning Commission. This is referencing our Jenkintown 2035 plan. Mm -hmm. I don't think I'm going to I just need to be able to click the slide. Okay.
Um, a lot of great background information, photographs um, of the community. It's amazing. Yes, a lot of it's amazing. <laughs> Um, so you also now have a, an idea of the design we're going with. It's four theme colors and icons for each of the theme elements and really working to make this a very uh, user-friendly, attractive document. And I'll just say that these correspond to the big <coughs> boards that were yes. around. I, I don't see them anymore, but uh, they were also really beautifully done. So I wanted to um, mention again and thank all the steering committee members. Um, this group met um, pretty much monthly for a year and a half, working through um, all the different topics and topic areas of the community, um, guided the public outreach um, process in the beginning. Um, the graphic I, I think I've shown most of you before, but kind of what a comprehensive plan does. So in the middle, we have your comprehensive plan, um, which has a strong um, vision and was um, deeply rooted in community outreach, public involvement. Um, and the state planning code requires that your zoning ordinance, subdivision and land development ordinance, and capital improvements program all be relatively consistent and working to implement um, the vision of your comprehensive plan. Um, but we also um, are beginning to see that the comp plan will um, guide multi-municipal and agency coordination, you know, working with PennDOT, SEPTA, um, your adjacent townships, um, and also grants, which oh, I don't have my grant slide right here. Here, grants. So we've already had success with um, a recommendation from the comp plan to do a gateway treatment. Um, so we got a $73,902 grant from Monco 2040 program. It's about $93,000 total. Um, and so on the bottom, we have the, the current view looking north at the intersection of Washington Lane and Old Dirk Road. Um, on the top, we have our um, artist rendering of what it could be. Uh, so we're the vision was to reposition the um, historic monument, talking about George Washington's uh, march up Old Dirk Road, um, additional landscaping that mirrored on both sides to be complimentary. Um, and the banners um, are a custom design with the globe lights on either side of the road to be reminiscent of the gateway um, down by the Greenwood Avenue Bridge. And then a series of banners where we have more room on the, the former bank site. Um, our landscape designer actually said that that was um, reminiscent of George Washington's march up Old Dirk Road, the banners are marching, um, and the design of the banners could be um, changed out for the seasons or other um, art initiatives that are going on. Uh, we've also included um, continental crosswalks and um, wider sidewalks, and there's also a bus stop um, where that black car is on Washington Way in the upper picture, or those pictures, that's actually a bus stop. Um, so there's a, a design to have uh, additional amenities there, for transit users. We also incorporated a small rain garden um, to manage runoff from the, um, the former drive through circle in the pump bank property. Let's try to We're excited about that. that. We were just talking with Mr. Glanson. Okay, awesome. Um, it's very exciting to see that come forward. And, and also, we're, we're hoping that that design is um, replicable as we um, fill the gaps and we send along with our road and that might get other people thinking about how to beautify the properties. Um, so here are the, the four themes, the, the four chapters that you have in front of you. Um, neighborhood preservation, economic development, sustainability, and transportation. Um, and before I mentioned the, those posters that, that we had here, we had an open house here in Borough Hall <coughs> um, on Wednesday, March 22nd from 5 to 8 p.m. Um, 52 visitors, um, many of which were, were business owners, which was nice to see. Um, almost all of them were also residents. Um, and everyone was given a, a handout that I actually on the slide. Um, so there were posters set up around Borough Hall. Um, 
the four themes. And each theme, we've called out nine recommendations or strategies. Uh, and people were given three votes for each theme. So they had to narrow down the, the nine recommendations for each theme, only vote for three. So we got a sense of um, what people saw as, as the big priorities. So here, um, again, it's organized by theme. So under neighborhood preservation, um, repurposed green spaces. So um, definitely park access is on people's minds. Um, Alberthorpe Park access got a lot of votes. Um, preserve existing housing, institutional reuse, Jenkins Town Borough Hall, and those are the top five. Um, economic development, um, talked about business development, you know, reducing the number of vacancies and continuing to enliven commercial area, streetscape design, um, the Jenkins Town Wing Coach Train Station. Um, and it's nice to see that um, a new borough staff position for economic development got um, a good number of votes. It's definitely a recommendation in the comp plan and something that would um, make day-to-day -day implementation of a lot of the strategies in here um, more manageable, potentially. Uh, in terms of sustainability, um, people are very interested in tree canopy. It's definitely a characteristic of the borough that people appreciate. Um, seems like some people understand the sewer capacity challenges <laughs> unique to Jacob Town. Well, stormwater management, recycling, renewable energy. Transportation, of course, um, 37 votes for improving walkability on Holder Road, um, which is something we talk a lot about in the plan. It ties into traffic calming. Um, bike routes and amenities got 22 votes. That's good to see. Road maintenance and train station improvements. One of the top five there. So that was a, a really good um, event to see people. Um, so now I'd like to, to go over the, the themes again and just um, touch on what each of them embodies. Um, so something I, I learned early on um, about the borough was that you know people come here, people move here for more than just a home. It's like a way of life. You're, you're closer to your neighbors. It's a, a unique, diverse community. They're walkable, green. Um, with the excellent access to transit and employment centers. Um, so all of that is something we heard um, through public outreach and is um, embodied in the neighborhood preservation chapter. We talk about um, prioritizing preservation of the scale and character of residential areas. Um, the way they've evolved um, is very unique. I also talk about health and, and public safety within the community. Um, parks and open space, um, and institutional land use. The economic development theme. Um, I, I believe this is the longest chapter, and um, the first element, commercial land use, um, includes a lot of um, great information. There's a retail demand analysis. Um, we talk about vacancy, uh, new business types that we may want to look at. Um, clearly allowing in the zoning, uh, Main Street management options. Uh, overall, the vision is to build upon and support the growth of um, Jenkintown as an arts, entertainment, and dining destination, um, while building on a more cohesive commercial corridor as a whole. Um, we've, also, we've already mentioned to Addington Township that um, we'd like to look at, you know, they just adopted a brand new zoning ordinance, but we want to look at the section in the northern gateway. You know, now we have a grant to improve the southern gateway, but we also want to look at the northern gateway. There's a whole um, several blocks that are half in Jacob Town, half in Addington. So um, looking at coordinating our zoning and streetscaping efforts to, to make that a more cohesive transition into the borough. Um, something they sh we're showing interest in. Um, this chapter also talks about um, considering a borough staff position to coordinate business activity and promotion and provide support services, um, which would again be um, very important to day to day implementation. Um, sustainability. Um, here we talk about protecting and enhancing natural resources. Again, the tree canopy comes up a lot, so it's very important um, 
to both the narrative character and the, um, the natural feeling of the borough. Um, in terms of water resource management, um, we talked about small scale stormwater management, um, looking for creative ways like permeable pavers, rain gardens, rain barrels, um, to help manage stormwater runoff on a property by property basis. Um, also talk about renewable energy, sewer capacity planning. Um, in terms of waste reduction, we look at improving overall recycling rates. Um, it looks like the greatest areas for improvements are recycling on um, commercial business properties and institutions. And the fourth theme is transportation. And the four elements here relate to the four main modes of transportation, ways people get around. Um, of course, vehicular transportation, we talk about Old York Road, um, that it will always be a challenge, always have its pluses and minuses, um, but we have a detailed outline of ways to evaluate conditions and continue to coordinate with PennDOT um, on ways to improve that, to balance the fact that we want it to be walkable while permitting it to be an important arterial for the region. Um, we talk about the borough's inherent walkability and just wanted to protect that and change that. Um, bikeability is a, more of a challenge, but um, we have some recommendations to work with Abington and Sheltonham on trail connections, um, share roads, which are um, when the road's not wide enough to delineate a separate bike lane, you can use signage and pavement markings and education to um, encourage people to share the road with bikers. <laughs> um, and public transportation, um, the main recommendation is to continue to coordinate with SEPTA on stationary improvements that look at um, advocating for the, the high levels of service, high ridership, um, and amenities that um, they're modernizing both Jinx Town and Coat and Noble stations, but, but certainly, especially for the borough, Jinx Town and Coat is um, a major reason people move here, I believe, and a major economic <coughs> driver, um, major name recognition as well in the region. Um, so, um, within the, the outline of the plan, um, again, the, the themes are the, the heart of the plan. There will be some introductory chapters. Um, we'll talk about the planning process and community vision. Um, we also have a summary and a background chapter of geographic context, historical context, demographic data analysis. Um, there's also a land use plan, which um, is less um, inherently applicable to a built-out borough, but it's a requirement of the, the state planning code, so I've crafted it more around character areas within the borough um, and distinguishing between um, groupings of different types of housing and different characters of the commercial area. It's very closely tied to your current zone boundaries. Then um, there's a section that's an overview of the theme and theme elements and we'll kind of be a little primer on how to read the theme chapters in terms of the icons and how the recommendations are um, at the end of each element section. And then we go into the four themes. And then we have the implementation section. Um, and I'm playing with two different structures of tables. Um, this one shows the grouping of all of the strategies um, by recommendation um, in the same order as the theme chapters. And it also shows um, when you look across the row um, where a strategy has interrelationships to other elements. <coughs> Like the first one, the MP1A, Neighborhood Preservation um, Recommendation 1, Strategy A, is to uh, monitor proposed and completed developments, conversions, variance requests, et cetera, and draft ordinance amendments as needed to protect the scale and character of residential areas. So we see that that can also have implications for um, placemaking and walkability. <coughs> and the, the red dots, um, the color of the dots will change with the themes. Um, that's indicating what strategy type um, we're talking about. And some of them have multiple types because there might be, you want to do some additional planning to determine what ordinance amendment you're doing, and then you're gonna want to have private development take it over from there. So 
That would be an example where you'd have three dots under each of those strategy types. Um, but the strategy I just read was a regulatory control recommendation. Um, would I read the other strategy? There's six of them there, right? I just was curious what what are those? <coughs> It would be easier to read from the, the team chapter. Do we have that? Yes, this is, I can find a page number for you. Um, yeah. The recommendations in the neighbor preservation chapter start on page 12. Okay. Yes, and also the tables are, are somewhat abbreviated um, to be able to see as many and compare across strategies to see as many on one page. Um, but really, going back to the, the theme chapters is where you get the, the nitty gritty. I tried to include photographs with a lot of them to talk about existing conditions and recommendations. Um, so that first recommendation, what we're talking about preserving the diverse range of housing types that represent different time periods, architectural styles, and building materials, and contribute to the historic identity of the residential community. So that's the, the recommendation. Um, Wanting to preserve that very valuable aspect of the borough that um, the residential areas have inherently. So then there are three strategies under that um, first recommendation. I'm looking at um, the zoning ordinance, where we have the traditional residential infill overlay ordinance, so kind of just having a procedure for keeping track of. Um, how you feel about applications that come in and go through that overlay or go through other zoning standards and see if there's something we should be looking to change to ensure that we're uh, protecting the scale and character through the ordinances. Um, the next strategy is talking about um, enhancing aspects of the community that make it an attractive place to retire and support residents who wish to stay in the borough and age in place. Um, some characteristics of the borough that, that make people want to stay here, um, again, walkability, diversity of housing types, access to senior services, opportunities to engage within the community. Um, so just wanting to recognize that. Let's see that um, overall, um, the age of the borough seems to be aging. <laughs> you can tell that from this room all the time. <laughs> um, Let's see. Um, and the third one under that recommendation was about um, education um, to residents about appropriate preservation maintenance techniques that, that put their budget. Um, that could take the form of, of in-person trainings. Um, I know Lower Marion Township offers trainings on you know, finding the right windows for your older home or insulation. Um, I believe they get funding through CDBG to offer those programs. Um, but a design manual could also be a good tool to inform people about the valuable aspects of their, their residential property, how it fits into the larger history of the borough. Um, and then I just wanted to describe what's going on with the, the tables that, that you have in your packets. Mm -hmm. um, these are all of the same strategies that are that are in that previous table and are um, more in detail described in the theme. Um, but the now column headings mean I figured out zoning and mm -hmm. and Salvo, what's S W N? Stormwater management. Stormwater management. And then a couple might fall under other, like a property maintenance code or you know, a natural features code or something like that. Um, so now, I should go back and slide. So there are these six types of strategies. Um, and now they're, I've rearranged the recommendations so that they're grouped by type and then ordered by priority. Um, so the first type is regulatory controls. These would be your, your ordinance updates or code updates. Um, so, and then I, I started to use stars, and three stars is highest priority, one star is a low priority, but still a priority. So I thought that was more visually, um, more easily interpreted than using initials for low, medium, high, mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. um, so, so again, it's ordered by priority here. Um, 
and still groups um, in order of the, the themes and theme elements, but all of the three stars are at the top, and two, and one. Um, and then each of these tables is a little different based on the type of strategy. So for this one, I, I have the column indicating which ordinances um, we're talking about evaluating. So uh, again, going back to that first example um, of monitoring um, projects to ensure that your codes are um, preserving the scale and character of the neighborhoods as you'd like. Um, that would be, we want to keep track of the zoning and SALO standards. That could help with that. Um, if I could just interrupt, it, it, it was actually these headings that I was curious about on that previous chart. Oh, right. And then I went off on a whole tangent. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so I'm just going to say them out loud because mm -hmm. I think it's important to think about there are regulatory control strategies mm -hmm. and then there are <coughs> capital investment and staffing strategies and then there are additional planning strategies where we might need the services of, of planners. External coordination strategies, for example, coordinating with Abington Township or Cheltenham, private development strategies, and then education and outreach. Mm -hmm. So that, that's great because mm -hmm. I appreciate the way this was put together. Mm -hmm. Sure, I think I've come across a, a format that would be helpful. I was envisioning that something like that could be what you more easily reference in a meeting like this on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, you always have the, the full report to reference back to, but when you're trying to balance two project ideas, um, I hope that would be helpful. Um, so, our uh, next step. Um, so I mentioned that there are a couple of um, supplementary chapters that I, I'd be happy to uh, present to you as well. Um, and then that's the full package. I mean, it's probably 95% done from, from my end. Um, so I would just um, like to hear how you feel about it and how you'd like to move forward with adoption. Well, I think you should get a PhD in Jenkintown. <laughs> 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 On this, where do we, how do we get them to you? Oh, here, I do have cards. I should have included them in this packet. Thank you. This is really exciting. George has me on speed dial as well. Or vice versa. And I have you on speed dial. Um, so <clears throat> I was actually going to ask you the question of where are we in the steps? I know this needs to be at least communicated to surrounding communities. Yeah. Um, and so, so that is one step that we have to take. Uh, we also have to take the step of presenting it or having you present it to the, the planning commission itself, which I assume has been happening all along. Yeah, um, Jim. Jim Rose was, was on our steering committee, so um, actually I meant Montgomery County, but yes, Jenkins County's planning committee. Yes, yeah, well. actually the I'm, I'm sure your solicitor knows this um, better, but um, you, you have to have a, a public meeting where the planning commission discusses um, the comp plan as a public hearing at borough council. It's um, similar to adoption of zoning ordinance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess one of the one difference might be that you have to send the comp plan to your neighboring municipalities and your school, school, district. school districts. 
um, for a 45 day public comment period? Yeah, it's in the municipality's planning code yeah. process. I can get with George and make sure it's done. Okay. Okay. Um, and we are going to place it in the library. We'll have a copy here for people to review. So your, your advertisement could um, list places where people could see the drafts. Like we can certainly um, upload it on your website, um, have a copy here, have a copy at the library, you have a copy at school, um, and of course copy at the planning commission if anybody wants to come visit us. <laughs> Anyone else have any comments or questions? I'll just, I'll just comment, you know, reiterating um, what Deborah said. I think it's an amazing um, package you put together. And we've, we've talked, there's been so many pieces of this, and you really pulled it together into a cohesive um, report. And um, I, I really am looking forward to getting into it because it, it, there's great information in there, and the graphics are great in terms of understanding, you know. Um, you know, the prioritizing certain strategies over others and things like that, it's, it's really helpful the way you put it together. I want to add to that. I think that um, when you work so hard on something, it's nice to know that someone actually is going to pay attention to it. And I'm, I really am really excited about reading this. So I, I too want to thank you for giving us something that I think is so thorough. And I think it's really accessible. So yeah, I, exactly. it's, I think it's going to be like a pleasure to <coughs> my Thank you. Thank you. I forgot to mention that there are five appendices. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, we have a detailed summary of all the public outreach, um, all the parking um, research we did last summer, the inventory and um, observation um, techniques. Uh, the retail gap analysis is more in detail in the appendix. Um, uh, funding strategies and a glossary. Are we going to get all that? <coughs> yes. Okay, great. So are you going to give us physical copies like this, or should we anticipate it? Did you, like, how, how do you think um, it Whatever you prefer. I prefer the, I like to be able to write on things, so yes, I personally prefer too. the physical. Okay. <laughs> well, next time um, I'm before you, I'll bring um, all those supplementary chapters. And, um, yeah, currently, they're, they're all in individual files, so once they're all finalized, um, we'll get it all page numbers, okay. and footnotes will be continuous throughout. Um, so currently, each section has its own page number. This is perfect. This is perfect. Will really the public get mm -hmm. access to those appendices as well? Will they see them as well? Yes. And will these present those to the public as well? Yes, I think okay. it would be adopted as part of the current plan as a full package. So. Okay. So we should wait until we get that. Um, I don't know that I have any other comments. I mean, I, I feel like we should move forward. I haven't read it really thoroughly yet, but it just... You know, we've certainly talked about it enough, but I, I think it's really, you've done a superb job. Mm -hmm. um, we are already operating out of it. Mm -hmm. um, we are already taking steps uh, that, based on the recommendations that we heard when our small groups were meeting um, and as we put all of this together. So I think it's, um, it's a really wonderful roadmap for the borough and moving forward. Um, so, we probably should, maybe you and I can set up a timeline in terms of a couple of other public meetings um, where the information can mm -hmm. be presented. Yeah, I can certainly um, come before you again with all the supplementary chapters and, and make sure everyone likes the, the flow of that. Um, and then once you have that, Madam President, then what you should do is put a motion on the agenda to direct staff to officially begin the process. Meaning because there's this, but then there's a legal requirement right. in the municipality's planning code actually make it a legal document. Yeah. And I feel like that should begin in September. Okay. Yeah. okay. So if we can aim for that. Mm -hmm. Any other thoughts? Anything from staff? I'd love to, if there's an extra copy, I'd love for Jim to have it. Okay. Yeah, there, there are two extra copies there. Actually, we'll, we'll end up with three. I took one for something. Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. And I can send the, the PDFs if, if anybody else mm -hmm. needs it. Um, Do you need anything more from us? Um, well, it certainly sounds like I'm on the right track. Uh, yeah. 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 Awesome. Um, um, yeah, each of these theme chapters was vetted um, by managerial staff back at the County Planning Commission. So transportation, I sat down with the transportation chief and um, a lot of tweaks were made from, from all of those meetings, but um, <coughs> I think it's, it's very close to being perfect. <laughs> 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 yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm serious. If this isn't a PhD, I, I, I don't know what it is, you know. Um, but <coughs> I'll just 
build, we, I had anticipated that Steve Spindler was going to come mm -hmm. and give us a little report about the, um, the Viking event that took place in the borough a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, on page 31 is what he was referencing. So you and I were kind of, I think, mm -hmm. missing each other in our <laughs> conversation. But I just wanted to go back to that because um, She's no. talking about page 31 in the blue chapter. Yes, I'm sorry, it's the transportation chapter. Um, Steve is really eager to have Jenkintown be added to the county map. Um, there's a comprehensive map being made. And I guess right now there's a gap where the trail comes, the bike trail comes. I don't even know. Along Tokenic Creek or something? Along Tokenic Creek. And then um, it, it stops in Jenkintown and then it picks up again later in Abington. Okay. So we want to close that gap. And yeah, be added they don't want to bypass the borough. There's so much here. Right. So much going on. Yeah. Yeah, I can talk to the transportation planners about that. That would be great. Maybe you could reach out to Steve and see if we could reschedule his presentation on, on his uh, initiative. Yeah. Great. Thank you very much, Marlene. Thank, thank you. And thank you, um, those who were involved in this um, in the steering committee. We really appreciate it. Do you want to walk over Okay, I'm going to move ahead with our agenda, and we have committee reports. Uh, Marley, you're of course welcome to stay, and Jeff, have a good night. To stay. <laughs> Won't be offended if you leave. Have a good night, guys. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Um, let's have our committee reports. Vice President Bunker. Thank you very much, uh, President Panko. Panko, um, the report is in your folder. Uh, the things to notice that uh, we've had some police overtime which should be ameliorated by the two uh, part-timers, so we're hopeful that uh, catching up to our hiring plan will uh, fix some of that overtime stuff. Um, we had a good conversation about modified accrual accounting, um, which, uh, perversely enough, I found fascinating. Mm -hmm. You're probably glad you weren't there. Uh, an economic development proposal from a gentleman who is working with Willow Grove, I believe it is. Upper Dublin. Upper Dublin. Um, and would like to maybe work with us on some economic development planning. And then uh, of most interest, I think, um, Rick Lewis got a Pirica website to the point where we think in July it will be ready for presentation to the public. So all of our uh, borough finances back for multiple years, ready to be sliced and diced and analyzed and examined um, in a trip way. So, Thank you very much. Any questions or comments for um, Vice President Bunker? <coughs> All right. Uh, Councilor Carroll, Building Zoning and Revitalization. Thank you. Um, your packets are, are your minutes rather from last meeting on the 19th are in your packet. Um, I'll highlight um, Councilor Bunker referenced that uh, meeting with an economic developer. Um, thank you, Manager Locke. And, uh, and Mr. Ware for initiating that meeting with um, with um, that professional. I found the discussion on strategies to enhance our business retention and um, place making of the borough really um, informative. And again, it is something that was discussed in the um, 2035 plan. So we are looking to, to move forward um, on some of those initiatives. And um, additionally, I found um, we're getting the first glance at the Jacob Town Trade Station accessibility improvements. Um, we're getting a first sense of what that's going to look like. So um, we're continuing to uh, want to be involved in that land development as that proceeds. And that's all I have for any questions. Well, I'll just make the statement that um, some of us are concerned about the way the land development or the pr proposed um, development of the train station is progressing mm -hmm. and uh, would like very much for the, the uh, SEPTA has actually not presented their current thinking 
um, to Jenkintown Borough has presented it to Cheltenham. Um, so I've asked Manager Locke if he would try to coordinate a meeting so that we could get more information and talk with SEPTA officials about that development and see if we can have some kind of influence on. Um, Madam President, I, I would, I, one of the things I would suggest is um, perhaps either you or Manager Locke write a letter or send an email to uh, County Commissioner Ken Lawrence, who is on the SEPTA board. Okay. That would be a good suggestion. And perhaps he can help entertain any. Great, that was me third. Thank you. Um, yeah, yeah we'll, I, go ahead. Fights, I was um, at the meeting when they discussed those plans, and they just were very disappointing. Sort of huge, ungainly structures, chewing up a bunch of parking space when parking's already an issue. To my mind, somewhat pointlessly abandoning the existing structure rather than finding some ways to work with it to make it handicap accessible to both sides, and <coughs> which could be done in a pretty straightforward way just by making the pedestrian tunnel now accessible. Mm -hmm. You know, make it a little deeper and put the elevators in there and some of the huge towers over the tracks. Um, and some stories of, well, different stories being told to the different people at different times by the same set of people about, yes, we're trying to get a restaurant in there, and then talking to real estate developers and saying, oh, no, you don't want to move in there. We're not even trying to fill it. Um, so I, I was kind of grossed out by yeah. a lot of it. Um, <coughs> it'd be good to have them come talk about this. Agreed. Yeah, I can say that the last time we met with them, with SEPTA, they really weren't all that excited about a restaurant because they didn't want to give up any parking. Yeah, but then they're going to build all that stuff to right. up a third of the apartment. It's and also, I think that, frankly, I'm going to say something that may not be too politically correct. I think Cheltenham itself is not being all that wise about, I don't want any kind of additional parking structure or anything over there because the station is there. It was really there before Cheltenham was much of it, and, and they should consider well, we've got to accommodate these cars somehow. So um, maybe we need to reach out to Shelby as well and see if maybe we can see what their what their thinking is. Do we know what do we have <coughs> what their thinking is? I haven't talked with Cheltenham commissioners. There's right. a very active um, Cheltenham um, against group, group right. that are against the parks and garage. So they've been they have come to our <coughs> the one Cheltenham dot org um, is actually where you can get a lot more information about this plan rather than get it from SEPTA, because that's not that forthcoming. But um, <coughs> we definitely plan to be um, involved in this process so that Jenkintown's best interests are at least for address. Yeah. yeah. And it really yeah. is stupid to have that beautiful building over there. There's no plans mm -hmm. to and just use that let right it now. sit. Yeah. And deteriorate. And rot. Yeah. Yeah. Until it's bad enough that they can get it down. It's a shame. Yeah. OK, well, it's good to hear that we are all in agreement that we should keep pursuing um, greater involvement in that in those plans. Um, and I will write a letter to uh, Commissioner Lawrence. I have also been thinking that we should get uh, some of our state elected officials to come and <coughs> lend their voices to the to the planning as well. And if, if I may, this is perfect time for council to voice your opinion. Because the intent of the public meeting right now is to have everybody on the consensus that, yeah, well, we will do it with you for the past six, seven months. You're okay architecturally. All we're doing right now is someone in land development, which means you only review for compliance with your subdivision land development ordinances. Uh, so this is part of the time now before this, uh, the, uh, the land development application is made. No land development application has been made. It will be made. It will. Yes, I, I know for a fact that in the development application, two of them will be made. One in, in uh, Cheltenham and the other one is here. Okay. So they must comply with the ordinances. And this is not a condition of use for uh, any zoning application that they made where you can uh, enforce architectural compliance, if you will. Uh, this is just straight land development and you have not much mm -hmm. you know, teeth in there. Okay, that's good to know. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, should we move on to um, hearing uh, from Public Safety, Councillor Whitney. 
Well, Madam President, um, I know the uh, answer in your packet. I was absent because I was out of town in business okay. last week. But um, I understand it was a lively meeting. And we had some discussions. And I know I've participated in some ways about the uh, whole thing on the safe, the fire safety and the training and everything. Mm -hmm. And I think I can just say there's more to come on that. OK. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything to add? Did you chair that meeting? I did chair okay. it. Uh, so that's exactly right. Um, there is uh, right now an issue. We had a third party study done evaluating the training and procedures and readiness of the fire departments in the borough. And they gave us back some very good recommendations, mm -hmm. um, which in um, fire commission meetings were seemed to be acceptable. And then we sort of out of the blue got a letter from uh, President Adair, the president of the Pioneer Fire Company, um, very aggressively rejecting the recommendations of the study. Um, and we're going to have to figure that out. Or um, I would say that the borough's funding for that fire department is at risk. Um, and their continued use of the fire equipment is at risk. Um, because we can't have a fire department that doesn't have their officers trained for the perfect standards that isn't being safe. Um, they have to be safe. Madam President, I will say, because I'm a member of the NFPA, and also a member, I was a former firefighter long ago before I got old and fat. Um, and You're not that old, sir. I get that all the time. <laughs> um, but I will tell you that they are the only pioneer is the only fire company in all of Montgomery County and one of the few in eastern Pennsylvania who has not complied. I think that statement stands in itself. You really don't have to say too much more than that. They have taken some steps. There was one level of compliance of reporting that they have corrected. But there's still a lot of training uh, reporting Etc. that uh, we have to address with the fire commission and fire department. Okay. Well, thank you all for for that work, good work. Um, and I assume that these conversations will continue. Or if we would uh, we appreciate that. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Police support. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Uh, and I think a meeting has been proposed. Is that Did that meeting get delayed, Manager Law? Yes, it has not been set up. Uh, okay. The location is under discussion. Okay. <laughs> so there's, going a, to Pioneer. there's a proposal that we meet with members of Pioneer, and we have proposed that, that Pioneer come to Borough Hall and meet with us. In fact, we proposed to meet with them. Um, uh, I thought it was prior to one of our meetings, but we'll, we'll work out I just, the date. I, I just want to say that the things that the, the recommendation, the recommendation came from you. You know, a chief from Philadelphia, a very well qualified guy, are not anything that all of the other volunteer fire departments around here comply with, including our other volunteer fire department right here in Jenkintown. So we're not asking for them to perform any unnatural acts. It's just to be the same as all of the other volunteer fire departments around. To be trained to their to be trained high standards. To have that certification of that training mm -hmm. um, and to report activities to the state. I think it's via the camera. All right. Thank you for that. Um, public Works, Councilor Commons. Uh, thank you. The uh, minutes from the Public Works uh, meeting on June 14th are in your packets. Um, we're about two months out from paving. Um, the bids have been out. Um, they've come in and are currently under review. So uh, our recommendation is for the comment. Um, with the us there. Okay. Any questions, comments? All right. Um, Jenkintown School District, Councilor McGuan. Uh, Andrew Lock and I met with um, members of the school department district last two month, two weeks ago, I guess, on the 14th. They were really appreciative of the waiver policy for the ice cream truck. They thought that it was um, done timely, and they were really grateful for that. So we'll talk more about that in a little bit. They approved their preliminary budget at the June 9th meeting. There's going to be a 3.38 mil increase in taxes to make up for the deficit that they're facing. And the remaining year, remaining funds are going to come from surplus. So there's a, 
a consistent kind of struggle. Not, we're not unique in that way to how we're going to fund our schools. Um, the construction project, project is underway to replace the media lab and then to add three additional classroom spaces. Mm -hmm. And the goal is that those things will be done by the end of the summer. Mm -hmm. They communicated a desire to have all the inspections completed before school begins. Mm -hmm. And we have that same desire. We do, and we are really, we're still, we're really committed to doing everything we can to support the school and to yeah. make sure that they have what they need um, and that they feel very um, heard. So we're doing our, our best in that regard. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Any questions or comments? Uh, Councilor Farrell, anything from JCA? Um, no, we did not meet, um, unless I missed the meeting, it was the run, so there might have been a schedule, a uh, meeting that was rescheduled, I entirely missed. Um, with my knowledge, I have no update. Okay. Fair <laughs> 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 enough. Um, and plans are afoot for the Arts Fest. Yes. yes. Things are moving along. Okay. I would have gotten an email if there was any hitches on okay. that front, but I do believe things are moving along. Okay. Um, with regard to the multi-municipal group, I have an email here from Councillor Golden that's uh, uh, reminding us that Building One America is having their biennial conference on July 21st. Uh, I forget the location of that. It's in New Jersey. I'm not in Brighton. Yeah, I can't remember. Um, so that's uh, on the multi-municipal front. Okay. Uh, public Works Report, Mr. Riggins. How are you guys doing tonight? Good. Uh, my report is in your packets. Uh, not really much to highlight, a bunch of meetings. We did coordinate with Hinkles and McCoys for the 5K, 5K race throughout town. One was the color race, the other was the sunset. They very, they complied to everything we asked them. Filled up all their trenches, removed the plates. It was a successful one to where my knowledge no one was hurt and injured. So that was a good thing for the town. Other than that, you got any questions or concerns, I'll be happy to answer or respond. Anybody? Well, I'll say two things. One is I've noticed the um, street sweeper out in the morning. Mm -hmm. So that's good news. Yeah. Um, and um, also, on, in your report, it, uh, there's a highlight that you and Manager Locke attended a meeting with Abington Township about applying for a joint grant to address drainage issues at the intersection of Greenwood Avenue and Washington Lane. And I just want to applaud that. <laughs> Thank you very much. Keep up the good work because we really need to do something at that intersection. Um, yeah. Anything else for the works? Okay, very good. Uh, engineer's report. Thank you, Madam Chair. A copy of my June 9th report uh, is in your packets. I would like to highlight a couple of items uh, that I have for you tonight. Uh, the first one is I am back in front of Council with an update uh, pertaining to the Interceptor uh, A project in Sheltonham for the SERP. Uh, Sheltonham had, uh, had opened their bids uh, a few weeks ago and they got a total of five bids ranging anywhere between eight and a half million to <coughs> 11 million plus or minus. Uh, the question that was raised to me at the last community meeting, uh, whether or not uh, we know or we have an idea about phase four, because this project right now is a combination of phases 2A, 2B, 3, and a portion of four. Uh, as of now, uh, phase four is yet to be known. We have not identified what the exact scope is. It is an absolute unknown. We know a location for it uh, is between manholes A31 to A1. That doesn't mean it's 31 manholes, mm -hmm. uh, because there are gaps in between. Uh, but uh, we have a message that we're trying to get a, a conceptually what we're dealing with here, so the bar can find out what kind of share you're responsible for. Because, and I'm not sure, George, maybe you know if the township had awarded the uh, they, they said, but they have, if they, if they haven't yet, it looks like they may be going towards the 8.5 million, uh, and then you say it's 11, 11 percent, right. so that would be about 920, 930,000. So I'm sorry I have no updates for you on phase four, but I was told that I'm trying to. <coughs> Uh, the second report that I have, just want to uh, uh, brief council that uh, we're in the process of evaluating the stormwater backup and a possible resolution of Walmart and Tila. Uh, 
available to answer any questions or even in a manner that the court will provide any feedback necessary. Any thank questions? You. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, the mayor's report. Oops, no, I skipped over uh, Solicitor Kilkenny. Uh, thank you very much, Madam President. As uh, Ms. Sound reported, we went to court and uh, uh, resolved the situation with uh, 303 Runnymede Avenue. This was essentially a matter that was left open from January, and Judge McHugh asked us if there was additional information uh, to present to her. And uh, when Ms. Downs came forward with others in April, um, I wrote a letter to Judge McHugh. Judge McHugh called a hearing, and that's what we, um, that was the uh, subject of the hearing. Uh, Ms. Downs and uh, former Counselor Durkin uh, testified, and many uh, residents came, and the judge um, ultimately uh, found, uh, uh, found uh, a violation of the zoning ordinance, as was said. As I said to uh, Ms. Downs and everyone at the hearing, if there are additional violations, please bring them to mine and Mr. Locke's attention and we will evaluate them. Um, <coughs> other than that, I've been working with Mr. Locke and staff diligently on several right to know requests and um, uh, several uh, borough ordinances. Look forward to working with them on the implementation of the comprehensive plan. And uh, Madam President, that would include my report. Great, thank mm -hmm. you very much. Any questions or comments? Mayor's report? Thank you. No report at this time. Well, I would like to applaud the um, efforts that you have put together to for the uh, film viewing on um, Town Square on Friday nights. Not just me, but thank you. Yeah. yeah Ali Lester of, yeah. of uh, Groundwater Engineering fame. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, good. That seems like a great group. I wasn't able to attend on Friday night, but it, I drove by and it looked great. Really Pretty well attended. Maybe we'll do it again. I think a regular thing. Maybe. Yes, I'll do it. Chief Dean Valentino. Thank you, Madam President. Just have a couple of things. Um, <coughs> on the 22nd at the train station, we had our coffee with the cop that went very, very well. Um, a lot of people showed up, had some coffee. We had some good suggestions. Um, which side were you on? Inbound or outbound? Uh, inbound. <laughs> but uh, um, it was it was nice. People came up and, and they enjoyed it. They had some comments. They had some suggestions that uh, we brought back at our debriefing and we discussed what we were told and then we would address them. Um, could be a shorter way that we would address their concerns. But we had a good time and they had a good time. And we're planning more around the local restaurants in town, but not for a couple of couple of months. Great. And also, um, tomorrow I'll be at the Col Ami Synagogue for the uh, uh, Immigration Forum, so I would be glad to be there. That's from 7 to 9. 7 to 9. Yeah, good. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to that, to see how that goes. And um, I just want to let you know that um, I'm aware of the, of the overtime issue, uh, Vice President Bunker, but we were still investigating this um, thefts of uh, vehicles around town. We're still being played with that. Um, not only us, but Abington and Springfield and Cheltenham as well. So uh, I'm aware I'm trying to keep it a lid on overtime. However, I did. Uh, meet with the command staff and the uh, uh, the officers uh, at roll calls, and we're not just going to sit back and hope we bump into this and catch the guy. We're actively on top of it, and we have people out on foot and on bikes. We're just going to incur overtime, but um, we we have to get a handle on. It. Is anybody breaking into any cars that were locked? No. That's what I thought. It's good to remind that, the public of that. Yeah. Yet again, of locking yeah. doors. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now, I just put, we, we're trying to, we're, we're coming, there's little minute clues that we're coming up with. Mm -hmm. um, but there's no set pattern. Okay. So, without a, without a pattern, it's very hard to attack it. Mm -hmm. So, 
I'm aware of overtime, Madam President, but I have people out there and we can pull the stuff. Well, thank you very much for your diligence. Appreciate that. Is it true that one of the residents, I think on Vernon, a car was entered, but they found nothing in it and accidentally dropped and left a $10 bill behind? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I heard. Oh wait, that was my ten dollar bill. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Uh -oh. yeah, that's it. We can post that whoever left the ten dollar bill inside yeah. the resident's car, please <laughs> come to the police station to pick it up. Please come to pick it up. Yes. Do, you, do you think it's one person? No. Or do you think it's many? No. no. It's, this is a com this is a every summer. This is a combined effort. It's a brain. Because we believe so. Because Abington now is being on the east side of the township, mm -hmm. Jacobtown, they're being hit in the Jacobtown section, Cheltenham's being hit in the Wincote section, Springfield Township's being hit right over the border of Cheltenham. Mm -hmm. um, we thought we had this thing tied up last night, uh, this morning around 3.30, but um, we're, we're still looking into that. So each time something happened, but the main thing we're trying to get across to people is please lock your car doors. Mm -hmm. I just can't seem to get that across to people, just lock your doors. Mm -hmm. And it makes it very difficult, but I'm sorry for the overtime, um, Vice President Bunker, but I want to stay on top of this until we get the guy. Thank you. We're down. Mm -hmm. right. Maybe. <laughs> I think you were just dismissed, Mayor. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even react to that. I think that was the response to a lame duck, Mayor. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, Manager Luck, do you want to give us a few highlights from your yes. report? Yes. Thank you. That's been my pleasure. Um, I only have a couple things, and I do have something to bring up on the new business that just transpired uh, concerning the CDBG grant. But uh, the LED lighting procurement project is due to start within the next two weeks, restart within the next two weeks. We've pretty much solved all the issues that we had with it. We had a couple of residents that had complaints come to the last committee meeting and say that the measures we took corrected it. So that was a reinforcement that we gladly accepted. Um, there is a ZHB hearing that will be held on July 6th at 7 p.m. It's for 610 York Road, and um, Faulkner Nissan? Faulkner yeah. Nissan has applied to put parking in a lower <coughs> level. One evening meeting, uh, zoning hearing board hearing was held. It went two or three hours and then was held over for this day here. So that will be happening on July 6th. And that's really all I have. And, in your packets on my report if you have any questions. We have several grants running uh, concurrently. We have eight open right now and the War Memorial which we applied for. They actually uh, emailed me today and asked for uh, clearer pictures of the monument. They said it will help our application. They're not awarding until September. Uh, but they reopened ours so we could add pictures in, which was very nice. I can answer uh, any questions for Manager uh -huh. um, I I will not be available to come to the ZHB hearing on July 6th, and I wonder if there are others uh, on council who will be able to come. I can come. You can? Oh, great. Okay. I think it would be good to have at least one. I think when we talked about it, I'm the only one in town that week. Yeah. Emily <laughs> Loser is not on vacation. Lock the doors. <laughs> You'll be alone in town. Yes. <laughs> Okay. Thank you for doing that. Um, all right. So, on the order of business, uh, we have already um, taken care of items one and two. Uh, item three. Uh, I move to approve the waiver request on behalf of Ashraf Seliman, um, who is the uh, owner of Blue Bunny Ice Cream Sales. He may not be the owner, he may be the franchise person for Blue Bunny Ice Cream Sales. 
um, to allow for the solicitation and street sales of ice cream within the borough, provided that Mr. Sullivan complies <coughs> with all requirements set forth uh, by borough council. And those requirements, do we have those in our packet, uh, Madam yes, mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, I got it right there. All right. So. Um, a lot of thought and consideration went into these requirements, and the main, you know, one of the main revisions to this um, waiver is that um, no ice cream will be sold on the streets that are abutting the school district. Uh, and this was at the request of the school district. So those streets are actually outlined in this um, document that sets up the conditions. That only while school is in session, or well, I had that same question. Do you know the answer to that? I didn't hear the question. I'm sorry. Is it only while school's in session? It seems uh, like you should be able to go anywhere. We didn't session. specify that, but there is um, there is a date in here for this solicitation permit. It's May one to Labor Day. Okay. okay. So it. It takes care Can of I that. make a comment on that? I don't know if you want to change it based on what I'm about to tell you, but when I talked to the superintendent, um, I specifically asked her that question, and she was very happy with um, limiting, once school is out, limiting that prohibition to Florence Avenue, because she didn't want kids running off the playground and make traffic. Okay. <clears throat> if y'all are happy with it reads as it reads now, then that's fine. I, I would also point out that um, and the chief is probably aware of this, that the Mr. Softy man is also circulating in town. So, yeah. I, I actually think we probably should leave it the way it is now because not only is Florence dangerous, but I saw Mr. Softy on Walnut in my block, and it, that is really dangerous because and Mr. Softy has no permit. That is true. <laughs> <laughs> this specifically is, is Mr. So uh, I can't Oscar. run fast enough to catch up with yes. Mr. Son. <laughs> <laughs> but I should be call, that as it may, we still have to be fair. To I should call 911, yes. I guess, if I see him. <laughs> All right, so I've made a motion. Um, is there a second? Second. second? Okay. Is there any more discussion? We sort of did that out of order. Any more discussion or questions? You for ice cream. Yeah, yeah. for ice cream. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Very good. And we've already asked the police if they would be if they would have copies of this um, to hand out. So I would appreciate if Mr. Softy would come in with his petition. Um, and anybody else that's out there. Those are the only two I've seen. <coughs> okay, thanks so much. Um, we've taken care of uh, the appointment of the two part-time officers on items four and five. Is there any new business or discussion? Yes. Madam President, I have something to bring up. Uh, we were notified by the county that it looks like we're going to get the 2017 CDBG grant. It's for a lot less money put in for. We put in for about 200000 We got, uh, we're going to be awarded 75000 and that's for to continue the accessibility grant project. Bye, Chuck. Take care. So what, well. what they're recommending is that, and it makes sense, the engineering part is a good idea too, because they said if we combine the two projects, if we hold up on getting the 16 project, combine the two, um, and Councilor Connors, I apologize, <coughs> it's just transpired. Quite all right. Um, combine the two, it'll save the borough the, the, the inspect money, the advertisement money, it's probably 15 grand, 10 grand. That you'll spend that at 75, and they're looking to get the most bang for a buck, too. So they said if you'd be willing to put them together and we just bid it one time, uh, that's what they recommended to do. And we would just like permission to hold up from bidding the 16 <coughs> until the 17 is prepared by the county. That makes sense. Yeah, yes, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Very good, right? <laughs> Thank you. We actually might even get a better bid because we're putting more on the Right, right. Out the, the, the less the cost of the Exactly. And from a finance perspective, we also approve of spending later. Yes. <laughs> and less. <laughs> is that it? All right. We do have need for a brief executive session to discuss uh, matters having to do with real estate. And um, so uh, I move that we adjourn from the regular meeting.